Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at the top six PvE builds in New World. First off, you can see that we are doing a lot of great damage in this Tempest run with the Raging Torrent, with the Hatchet. It doesn't mean Hatchet is the only weapon to go, though. You can see here Angry Earth Bane is going to give you that plus 15% damage to Angry Earth, and then that Rogue is also going to give you 19% more backstab damage. It's a lot of extra damage. So we're going to start off with four DPS builds, going into a healer build, and then last but not least, a tank build. Here's the Hatchet skill tree that you're going to want to go for almost every single build type when it comes to Hatchet and PvE. Raging Torrent is going to be your massive, massive damage. This is also the spear type of build that you're going to want to go for almost every PvE dungeon. It's going to give you that perforate, which has great perks. Uh, we'll talk about those here in just a second, but the perks are going to be the next biggest thing to focus on as that is going to provide you with so much more sustain when you have gain a stack of Fortify, increasing damage absorption by 17% for 6 seconds per successful perforate hit. It's going to be fortifying perforate. It's very, very big. We're also going to want refreshing torrent or refreshing raging torrent because it reduces all hatchet cooldowns by a ton. Definitely when you stack this, you're going to be able to get such great refreshing torrent uh, you know, reduction on your cooldown. So 310 strength, 200 dexterity. You saw it there. Those are going to be the attributes you're going to want to go. Definitely, if you're not dying, continue with that 310, 200. It's going to provide you a ton of DPS. Next, we have the rapier and the spear. You can see the skill trees there. And if you need to pause, by the way, during the video to kind of get these down, definitely do so. These are some great, great builds. And hopefully your item is listed because, or your weapon is listed because some of these weapons just don't compete with some of these builds. So Leeching Flurry is one of the best to take with the Rapier. Each hit of Flurry restores 70, or sorry, not 70, but 47% of the damage as health, which is a very good way of sustaining not just your damage, but your health as well, obviously. So gain 19% more damage for two seconds after using evade this is omnidirectional evade you're going to want to use this quite a bit as it's going to provide you with another big percent damage boost next we have in line fortify and perforate we talked about this one quite a bit and we'll talk about it quite a bit in the future of this video because it gains a stack of fortify increasing damage absorption by 17 percent for six seconds per successful hit so that's why people are going such low con by the way with that fortify and perforate it makes it possible 50 strength 315 decks, and you saw the rest. It's a very, very solid build that gives you a lot of damage. Next in line, we have the Hatchet Great Axe. This is probably the most well-known right now as the current meta build. It's because the Great Axe gives you great utility. You aren't going to get that perforate anymore, but that Great Axe is going to be able to group up these mobs and do a lot of damage. So the Great Axe you're going to want to take the same thing with the hatchet, obviously. You know, you're going to want that refreshing torrent, which every hit of raging torrent reduces the hatchet cooldowns. But when it comes to the great axe, there's going to be insatiable grav well. So insatiable gravity well gain 52% of your damage with gravity well back as health, giving you more sustain and cast another four meter radius, uh, basically burst of damage as well. So it's going to give you more burst of damage. It's going to give you more sustain. It's an obvious take on the perk side. We have empowering rending throw as well. A decent one to take if you need a third perk that you want to be looking for. The attributes as follows, 260 strength, 250 dex, and 5 con. That's going to be if you guys are not dying in these dungeons. If you're dying in dungeons, always feel free to go a little bit out of the norm, take a little bit more con. This is definitely for experienced PvEers that are able to do M10 already and really speedrun M10. Here we have Ice Gauntlet as the next build. Ice Gauntlet and Rapier is a really, really strong build right now. It's just not as strong as some of the others, but it's very, very solid as kind of a backup. So Leeching Flurry again as your Rapier build, uh, you're going to want that perk for sure. Next, we have the Omnidirectional Evade. This is going to continue to give you that damage increase, 19% for two seconds after using that Evade like we saw before. And then when it comes to the Ice Gauntlet perks, we're also going to want the Storm. But here we have Keen Tondo. This is also a great option to take on any Rapier build because it's going to increase your crit chance by 21%, which is a huge, huge amount. So keep that in mind. But now we're to that Unending Thaw, which is going to basically give you Ice Storm dealing that 10% more damage and a frost effect remains on enemies for two seconds. So it's going to help you a lot when it comes down to continuous damage on these enemies. So 310 dex, 200 intelligence, and 5 con. You saw the red numbers as well there. If you want, you can take the red numbers. It's going to keep you alive a little bit better when you're doing harder dungeons that you've really just had rough success on. So now we're over to the Life Staff build. You can see Life Staff and Void Gauntlet skill trees. 
Like I said, pause during these videos if you want to see a little bit more on them. There's going to be a great option to take Enchanted here on your weapon, on your life staff, because you're going to be auto attacking so much, you might as well do some damage with your autos. So definitely take that Enchanted. Uh, we have refreshing move as well. Light and heavy attacks reduce your active weapon cooldowns by 2.9%, which is huge because you're going to need your heals up constantly, definitely with everybody going such low con. We have fortifying sacred ground. Allies healed by sacred ground gain fortify, increasing damage absorption by 16% for 5 seconds. This is another huge perk to take. It's going to allow you to continuously grant fortify to your team. We have vicious beacon next in line. When beacon heals a player, they gain plus 10% critical chance for six seconds. This is a very, very solid Vicious Beacon perk that will, like I said, help your healer continue to give you such great benefits. Petrifying Scream is the next one online. On successful hit, Petrifying Scream inflicts disease, reducing the target's healing by 40% for eight seconds. That can be very useful depending on the dungeon you're in, and you may want to utilize that if you can. We have more though. We have the Nullifying Oblivion. On activation, Oblivion removes limited duration buffs from enemies within its radius. Oblivion recharges 14% faster. So this is something you may need as well, depending on the boss and the dungeon type that you're going into. Uh, I do want to talk about the stats as well. So here we have the attributes. The intelligence obviously sitting at 5, the focus at 310, constitution at 200. You can also utilize that 410 to 100 stat uh, kind of regain if you want to. It's going to be kind of really depend on, like I said, your survivability, your team's needs. Uh, it does depend. If you have a dungeon team, you know exactly what they need. You guys can figure that out. I do want to go into the Sword and Shield, though. Sword and Shield and Great Axe is going to be the next one in line. This is going to be the skill tree for the Sword and Shield that you saw, and then the Great Axe again. Here we go. Uh, I do want to talk also about some of the perks again. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. You're going to want, obviously, Bane damage. Like always, it's going to be just the best thing to take on the weapon. But then thwarting strikes is huge. Deal 12% additional damage when you're active grit. So it's huge, huge damage bonus. And you're always going to need that with your sword and shield gravity well as well. Uh, with the insatiable gravity well, it's going to be huge damage. So gain 52% of that gravity well damage. Um, it's just, like I said, this is one of the best builds for tanks, 360 to 410 strength, and then 150 to 100 con is going to be the way to go. If you're a tank, an experienced tank, that is obviously if you're not definitely take more constitution because some of these dungeons can be a little bit tricky. Now, if you are a new player, for sure, uh, learn the mechanics before you guys try these low con builds. I think if you really want to, you will understand why these builds are all the strongest right now. In most of these dungeons they do insane amounts of damage let me know your build in PvE down in the comments below and if you have not already make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on I know today was a very very quick video for a top six build type of kind of video but I wanted to go quick you know we have people that have things they got to do they have people that want to grind in New World might as well give them the best top six builds right now and go straight from there so we do plan on doing a PvE tier list here in the future let me know if that's something you guys are interested in. I think we do have a lot of interest in that, so we'll probably do that uh, in the next upcoming weeks ahead. So thank you guys again. In the description, there'll be a pvebuilds.xyz link. It'll give you a very better kind of guided idea of these builds. Um, they have done some great speed runs. They have some great stuff, so definitely check them out. I'll have a link down in the description. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I'll see you all in the next one.